Hello and welcome to my movie lecture project. For this assignment, I'm defining the terms in chapter 10 of our textbook, dealing with the communications in close relationships. My PowerPoint design caters to the cultural aspect of the movie I chose. It's a well-known Disney classic that effectively defines the terms within the chapter. Thus, I chose Milan to best explain the concepts of dimensions of interpersonal relationships. For the purpose of not having the scenes of the movie jumbled, the sequence of topics I cover are not parallel to the order that's covered within the book. For my first slide, I'm covering the topic of family, since Mulan introduces her family first within the movie. Family can be defined as two or more people who are interdependent, share a present reality and a common past, and influences the future for one another. Interdependent means relying on one another, and thus can be seen in this first picture with Mulan's parents. The present reality involves Mulan and her mother about to prepare for her matchmaker interview. The common past can be represented by the ancestral stones seen in the background where the father sends his prayers, and influencing the future is done by Mulan's grandmother, who gives her hope as well as a cricket for her troubles. The family narratives for this movie explains their beliefs, traditions, and values held to one another. China has been a high-context culture that values their rituals and mannerisms, such as respecting their ancestors and catering to the roles that society has implemented for them. Mulan is forced with the fact of reality that she must represent the ideals of a perfect bride. Although unhappy with the fact, she obliges in order to keep the family connections intact. Women in this time period and region often aren't respected with their ideals, which leads me to my next terms, conversation orientation and conformity orientation. Conversation orientation deals with families who favor open discussion and a wide array of topics. In Mulan, we see the example of conformity orientation, which includes families who favor uniformity of attitudes, values, and beliefs. As Mulan speaks out against her disagreement with her father re-entering the war, he's quick to put her in her place, rejecting the thoughts she had on the subject matter. Additionally, the communication patterns covered in the family sections include consensual, pluralistic, protective, and laissez-faire. In this case, Mulan falls under the protective group since obedience and reluctance in sharing feelings are a common aspect within her household. In reference to other Disney movies, Pluralistic could include Snow White, since communication is open and each of the seven dwarves can contribute collective ideas. Consensual could be Sleeping Beauty and how her fairy godmothers take time to listen before making decisions. And lastly, with laissez-faire, Peter Pan could cover this term properly, since there is a lack of involvement with parental figures, or in this case, none at all. After Mulan goes off to war, we see the first interaction of her with what will potentially become her friends. Our book defines friendship as being voluntary and providing social support to one another. The difference between Mushu, the dragon, and her war friends is that essentially in the beginning, Mushu was sent to help Mulan as an involuntary action on his part. However, before Milan finds friendship, she's faced with a challenge known as expectancy violation, which can be defined as an instance where others don't behave as we assume they should. Thus, this behavior can lead to awkward or even tense situations. We see this as Milan tries to be one of the boys, but ends up causing a fight between the other war mates due to her odd behavior. In this scene, Milan hasn't quite smoothed out all of her boyish charm and winds up saying the wrong thing, which leads the males in her presence to act confused and result in anger towards Mulan. As the fight ensues, Mulan gets herself into more trouble and leads the whole camp to start a fight. As seen in the picture, the end effect results in her taking the blame and becoming the camp outcast. The textbook involves several examples of friendships people are likely to encounter. Task versus maintenance can be seen with the girls that Mulan involves herself with when trying to please the matchmaker. High disclosure deals with revealing a lot about yourself to another person, like the feelings Mulan shared with Mushu during her journey. Shang and Mulan have a high obligation to one another, since both would go to great lengths to protect one another. And finally, infrequent versus frequent contact, where her ancestors don't actually have direct contact with Mulan, whereas her friends in the military are with her all the time. 
With task orientation, Mulan only hangs around these girls because along with herself, each has an interview with the matchmaker. Wushu is Mulan's most trusted friend throughout the whole movie and never fails to suppress her emotions in front of him. Thus, Mushu falls under the category of high disclosure in terms of Mulan's communication. High obligation is seen plenty of times where Mulan first saved Shang from falling off the mountain, and in return, Shang gave a life for a life to Mulan after he found out she committed treason by acting as her father's son to join the army. Lastly, these guys Mulan are with are, have extended screen time and are often by Mulan's side during her time in the war. Something I found interesting was how the upkeep and friendships in the sense of ideals are similar to the themes of being a good war general, like Shang was. To include a few examples, maintaining confidence, standing up for one another, honoring pledges and commitments, respecting one another, and apologizing art and forgiving can be found within the textbook as examples. Towards the end of the movie, Mulan experiences love, at least in the first steps of a personal relationship. However, since Disney is G, there aren't any scenes with sexual activity, but love languages are still prevalent throughout the movie. Love languages include methods of expressing romantic affection, such as words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Although with this last slide, the inclusion definition isn't an actual bolded word in the textbook, I find it important to have since the inclusion of other in the self is others' views, experiences one own in terms of resources, perspectives, and identities. And what better way can Shang and Mulan see eye to eye than literally involving themselves in the same activities, which in this case, unfortunately, involves war. Intimacy can be achieved through intellectual thoughts, emotional feelings, physical contact, or shared activities. Throughout the movie, Milan develops each of these factors within her communication with others. Her intellectual thoughts and emotional feelings can be seen when interacting with Mushu. Physical contact can be seen in the lasting hug be between her and her father after her return home from war. And shared activities can be among Shang and her other war friends that fought together. I hope that with pictures and explanations, I was able to convey how intimacy communication between friends and families work and differ, and how love languages affect relationships as well. Milan is filled with so many examples, but with so little time, I can only cover certain aspects. But thank you for watching, and I hope that I, along with Milan, were able to teach you a few things.